to up north to back down into Chicago, then come back into Miami, and then we came back, you know. So it's been I just, it's no, bro. Yeah, I haven't got no invites to any of the shows. So. Yeah, because you're a busy guy. You're a busy guy. I don't bother you. You haven't that. got tagged. I haven't got tagged. Yeah, no, I don't tag people either. I figure if they just watch, out, they follow, they follow. If they follow, they follow. I don't. I'm not gonna force my shit on them. Yeah. Like what I do, you'll naturally find it. You know, you'll hear about it. What up? What up? This is uh Mellow Man Ace, and we're back on the Havana Lounge podcast. I'm so happy that uh we could be back, and today we're gonna do something extra special. We are live. Um, I wanna I wanna um first start by saying my apologies for not being on the air for a few weeks now i've been out on the road doing stuff doing live shows and y'all been seeing you know the 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 footage and the pictures fly on my social media pages and whatnot so when i do that i don't have a stand-in um but um welcome back everybody we're back and so i just want to start by thanking my my sponsors av chevy of antelope valley when you need to fly Corvette, Camaro, Chevy Tahoe, the whole nine, go see my man Justin, and he'll take care of you there. Also, um, Sterling Images, one of my new sponsors who's been on for this entire season. They've been great. When you need um, things, uh, pictures for your events, special events, weddings, quinceañeras, all these things, you want to go st- talk to Sterling Images. All right? Everybody's on Instagram, so you can find them there. <laughs> You can find them here on Facebook as well. And also my man, Damon Lee over at Daily Ads. When you need to promote your album, Romeo, That's right. you need to promote your album. Talk to my man, uh, Daily Ads, um, and he'll get you all set up. Big billboards on the side of the freeway, the whole nine. Now, I'm really excited because today we have a different look, a different setup. I have the cast of Sam's Cry with me. And... Uh, Sam's Cry, if you, if you guys are not familiar with what's going on with Sam's Cry, we're going to let you know what's up right now. These are the independent um, film producers, actors. This is the cast. These are the people that put it together. And I know Dub for a long, for, for a minute. And Dub's always been, he's always rocked with me. So I rock with him. He's a younger cat. I'm a little older. But we vibe on that same kind of hustle. And I think that me believing in him him as a younger dude he respects me because i did come to that level and i saw his grind and i think we get along just fine like that um so starting from uh my left we got my man romeo real say what up family what up baby it's your boy romeo reels you know what i mean that's the most that's the that's the little grinder right there (laughs) he he's flam with it man i love his his whole energy no doubt and to the left of me is the beautiful vanessa vanessa tell them a little bit about yourself Hi, everybody. My name is Vanessa Romero, and yeah, I'm a part of the cast uh, with Sam's Cry. It's been a beautiful journey, and we're looking forward to just chatting it up with you and talking with you about it. Good deal. We're going to get into it. Yeah. To my right is my man, N-Dub. Dubs, talk to him. What's up, man? It's it's your boy, N-Dub. It's an honor being on your podcast, bro. And Thank you. Like you said, it's been a long time. I listened to his music all my life, and uh, it's just an honor to be here, bro. We appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Next to you is the beautiful Angel Ray. Angel Ray, you want to say a few words? Yes. Thank you for having us here. It's an honor for you to, you know, help us get through this time and to really share what's really upon our heart about this production. You got it. It's my pleasure. I'm glad you guys are here. So let's get right into it. Whose idea was it to put the film together? (laughs) Who wrote it? Who produced it? Who directed it? Me. <laughs> I did, actually. So um, it started off with uh, basically in 1999, we had tried to pitch it with somebody in um, um, during an entertainment part where I was working at, but it never happened. 
So in 2017, to be honest with you, I'm going to just say it, um, a prophet had prophesied over me and told me that I was going to write and produce a movie. Wow. Uh, I've never had no experience as a um, film in anything like that other than I was a hair and makeup artist for film. Sure. So he didn't know. And uh, I took it for like a mission and a message and an assignment. And I started to go onto the ground and I start to see a lot of entertainment. Yeah. And I seen the development of Latino entertainment growing. And my heart was so happy that I start to see a growth in entertainment for the Latinos. And being that Sam is Latino and the whole part of the culture, I really felt that it was needed to be said. And sure. not only that, to bring people with talent with the with the with the story. Absolutely. Now what I'm hearing here also is you are a needle in a haystack, too, because when it comes to filmmaking, it's rare to see a female filmmaker, mm. right? Yes. Uh, is that safe to say? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so that being the case, now you got this idea and you want to ma make it manifest, right? You want to bring it to life. W where do you start being now? You're just by yourself. You're like, I need a grip. I need this. I need that. Producer, director, you know what I mean? How did you do that part of it? Well, um, prior to uh, actually putting the uh, production together, I was already doing like hair and makeup with a lot of directors and producers. I was already in the movement of entertainment. So you're watching things. Oh, yeah. You're definitely. studying as you're doing hair and makeup. Yes. Oh, this, that, yes. camera there, lighting here. Yes. All these things. Exactly. Yes? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Good for you. So I picked that up and I basically started to ask certain people, you know, to give me connections because I had wrote and produced. I mean, I was writing a story at the time. Yeah. And so I went ahead and finished off the script. And um, at the worst time, because my mother had just passed and I thought, my you know what, my mother, um, there was something in back of me that I felt like my mother was saying, get up and don't be depressed and move on. Yeah. And that's how that because my mom that's was amazing. My mother was very strong like that. Yeah. So I went in head and I started writing. And the funny part about it is I was writing on my phone because I had no computer. Yeah. So I was writing the script on my phone and passed it to a friend of mine through her email and she put it in format. So that's what I was doing when I was that's writing. Dope. Hey man, you gotta do what you I did do. what I had to do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I did. And before you know it, I got um, a hold of two directors at the time and we talked about it. And from that point on, we started to just walk right into it mm -hmm. yeah now when it came to writing the story line why why this particular topic why sam's cry what what was so intriguing about this story that you had to tell it and felt like the people needed to see it um because i really believe that uh, mental health has been hidden in in different ways or have a different type of um kind of like, um, you know, stereotype, you know, or people don't like to really talk about it. It's like taboo. Nobody likes to talk about right. mental health. Mm -hmm. And and little do they know that we all have some form or 10%, 5% or yeah. a percent of mental I mean, health. look, the we all went through the pandemic together. Mm -hmm. That has done something to everybody. Oh, yes. Okay. So, so anybody thinking like that right now is foolish, but um, you're absolutely right. Um, Tell me, tell me this. I, I had something that I really wanted to ask you. Um, um, I might have to get back to that because it's just slipped my mind. But you were saying um, th that that's really why you wanted to tell the story. Yeah, and and during the time when I was writing the story, because I knew the history behind Sam, I'd known him since he was young, and known you as personally. Knew, I knew him yeah. personally. Okay, then in that case, why don't you give us a synopsis? Let's set up the the story of of Sam so that my viewers can know what we're talking about here. We're talking about a, um, a family who um, we had, uh, the father was an entertainer. The mother came from a, a more of the gospel type uh, church setting. And you had two people with two different lives. So at that time um, in those days, you know, it was very hard for, like I said, Latinos back in that time in the seventies and eighties, it's mm. very hard for Latinos to break through entertainment. So the father was an entertainer, a well-known entertainer, and was basically never really home half the times because he was making money. And before you know it, it starts to really become a problem in the family. And as she's, you know, in the church trying to, you know, uh, stay focused and, you know, trying to 
you know, uh, raise a family. And it was almost like by herself. So it always caused domestic violence. Mm. So the domestic violence started to occur as a domestic violence started to occur. What was going on was the children seen it. And when the children seen it, it, it became a lot of times we don't see that children are very sensitive to watching the parents or watching things yeah, throughout and, their and life. It can cause trauma. It caused trauma. Of, uh, and it's and it's and it's mental trauma. Yes. You might not it might not be physically, but it's mentally draining and traumatizing for a child to grow up and see such violence in the home. Absolutely, I agree. So what it did was it set Sam back to the sense where um, you know, as he got older, uh, things took place. Uh there was a divorce and just things started to evolve. And then Sam um, basically was um, already what you say is vulnerable, maybe, you know, well, as he got into teens. So he started to go into the wrong crowd, which most children do. Looking for an escape. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So even though the child may have been like seven years ago in, in a trauma, traumatized, you know, state of mind. Right. Uh, a lot of times PTSD doesn't come till later. Interesting. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be right then and there. It yeah, can come like yeah. seventeen years later, where you're having all these flashbacks. You're always you're Absolutely. having these memories. These memories that are haunting you. Mm -hmm. So basically, he um, was haunted by his past in the you know his childhood. Sure. Yeah. So he ended up, like I said, vulnerable, uh, hanging out with some friends, and he did something that um, really wasn't his fault. But but in that time. Um, being, uh, there's a street code. He had to take the route for something he didn't do. Okay. And he ended up doing 15 years. In, Is that right? Yes. He ended up doing 15 years to life in the YA. Now you knew this, you knew Sam. I knew Sam personally. You knew Sam personally. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So now you, you, you're looking for a cast. You start looking for a cast, right? Yes. You want to put faces to these people that you know. Yes. So why, what, what made you want to get Romeo reels well, like who who does he play <laughs> and why did you want to get Romeo on, on the cast? Well, it's funny you say this because um you know, entertainment we're in the Latino entertainment, we're very small. We think we're big, but we're really kind of small. We're a small network, you know, and things get around I say really it all the time. Yeah, they, we are at the bottom of the totem pole of the entertainment. And um, things get around yeah, really yeah. quick. And I was told um basically is uh, why did I cast everybody? And it, it just went like that direction. And okay. it was because because I knew the family and because there were specific people that I believe God was showing me to pick. Yeah. And um and Vanessa's another story, but she could tell you that story. So basically the cast that I chose was um not so much that they looked alike, because concrete does not even look like the father. Yes, and Concrete is part of this cast. Yes, right? he is. Yeah, he's he is. A, he's the leading role, and he takes the father. And so, basically, it had nothing to do with the look of the family. It had everything to do with the message. And not just the message, but my heart's desire has always been, since I was young, is to see Latinos on entertainment. To see them in movies. To see them in television. Because sure. I grew up in a time where there was, no one could relate to me growing up yeah well, any of the shows were very similar yeah the shows were not that's why i started to yes. do this rap thing and bilingual and spanish yes and, and the shows were ago. not i mean i can't relate to the brady bunch and the marches yeah. i can't relate the brady to Bunch to me was a fantasy world that i always <laughs> wanted my family to be like right and it never was exactly never was. exactly so, so let's turn over here to my man reels yes. reels yes sir tell me what what's the name of your character that you that you play i actually play ronnie um ronnie uh he actually meets Sam later on in the movie, yeah. Inside the uh, the court appointed um, spot. To so you are a bad influence on. I'm him? I'm a, I'm already in a bad situation. Okay. Off back. So when you meet me, I'm already in there with him. Um, I'm trying to kick uh, alcohol, drugs as well. So mm -hmm. trying to uh, figure out who who he is at that moment as well, while everybody else is going through their situation as well. So. Sure. And I want I want to take the time to shout out my boy Biggie. Mm -hmm. um big oh, is biggie in yes. the cast as well is yes he, is part of the film yes. shout out to biggie that's my man right there i know that uh concrete as well that's my man shout out to concrete so now you're you're already in like in the system yep. when you meet sam and tell me how how did you guys like bump heads in the system how did how did that come about 
well, I, there's a uh, a girl involved. And uh, so Ronnie's like attracted to her. He's trying to get her attention, but she's attracted to Sam. So that's basically how it, how it get it, it's it, it goes down in the beginning. Yeah. But you know, like when situations start going negative, um, you're either gonna be uh, okay with it or you're gonna be like, no, that's not right. And at that time, that's when Ronnie's like, yeah, this is not right. So he's more closer to Sam at that point. You yeah. know what I mean? So in the beginning, it's more like a a little homie competition. Okay. You know, to see who gets the girl or yeah, whatnot. Yeah. And then it turns into like, man, this is real life. This is, you know, this is this is not right. So that's where, where Ronnie comes in. Now, do we see in the film how you get busted and end up in the in no. incarcerated? No, no. We don't no. see that part. Now, uh we're all street guys here and I, we don't want to divulge too much, but why how does Sam end up in correctional facilities? What does he do? Well, um, like I said, the first time he was um, about 15 years old. So he came out um, when he was uh, 27 or 28. Okay. And then um, he had a hard time trying to get back on his feet as an adult. Adjust to society. Yes, Absolutely. to adjust to society. And there was really no guidance for him or any type of mentor or whatever to guide him through. Because, um, you know, talk about the late 90s and... Um, and it was hard for him because he was co a convicted uh, felon. And so now he's looking for work. He can't get work. So basically he was out for almost like maybe a year and a half to two years before he actually passed away. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's, let's come over to you, Vanessa. What, what role do you play in, in the film? So I play, um, I play Judy. I play Sam's mom. Okay. Yeah. I play Judy in the film. So embellish, embellish. Well, um, you know, early on when I got the role from, from Angel Ray, one of the things that I inquired or I asked about was to be able to um, talk to the real Judy and Ooh. be able to really kind of understand who she was. Yeah. The beauty about that is that I was able to, to do that. And so I spent a good amount of time with Judy, not only hearing and understanding her story being Sam's mom, Right. And the complexities of what her relationship was like with her the father, yeah. Junior, that's played by Concrete, but also the backstory of her upbringing and um, her beginnings in her childhood as well. Yeah. And growing into a woman and, you know, the fantasy in her mind of what she anticipated, um, the, what her relationship would look like being married to this person. You know, I do clearly remember her telling me um, he was like my knight in shining armor. And that's so heartbreaking when you know the story because it's like it was nothing like that for her, you know. Um, and again, the the journey that that she goes on to, the courage that it required of her to go forward and to do what she did, you know, to seek some kind of justice. Let me stop you right there. Mm -hmm. So the father, mm -hmm. Sam's father, was a very very well known dude. Mm -hmm. Who was this man? <laughs> well, I don't know specifically. I don't know those details. Angel Ray, I think maybe you might be able to chime in a yeah, little bit more on that. Yeah, do we know who this man is? I mean, would I know based on, you know, entertainment? and? Um, Most likely, a lot of people knew. He opened up for, like, the Midnighters, and he opened up for B.B. King. He opened up for, did a lot of uh, opening up. He was a solo uh, vocalist. He sang oldies he's passed on now yes yes he's passed on okay now. do we, does he have a his, name? his name is junior just junior that's yeah. it mm -hmm. that's all we know mm -hmm. <laughs> that's all we want to know all right um so you have which a... is pretty good <laughs> okay junior peace to you rest in peace no mm -hmm. doubt um so you, you spend time with what's her name again? judy judy I, mm -hmm. you spend time with judy you get to know her you get to pick her brain yes so now you're not just talking to her, you're learning her, you're studying her, right? right absolutely. You want her mannerisms, you want her, mm -hmm. the way she talks, the way she walks, all these things, right? Right. You're, you're jumping into character is what you're doing. Exactly. And the, and the thing was, is that, um, you know, she had come to me more than one time. We had spent time together. And like, I got to tell you, the first time we got together, she just, I call it like downloading. She was downloading into me for hours on that day. She came back to see me again, and she told me, when I come back to see you, Vanessa, I'm going to bring something for you. I said, okay. So she shows up to my place, and she has a binder with her. 
And she tells me, I'm going to leave this with you. I trust you with this. I, want, I think you can pull from this in, while you're in production with this film. Yeah. And so what she left me with, Mello, was um, a binder that had everything from newspaper clippings to the correspondences that she had going back and forth with anchors, anchormen and women and news stations and, um, you know, legis legislative things. And I, I mean, just because there was so much that was involved in the situation, photos of her and Sam and the entire family. So I have yes. this, this keepsake that I've held on to that I still have in my possession that I've been able to draw from, you know, for this film. Yeah. Um, and so that was also something that was very um, supportive and, you know, helpful in this process of being able to take on her role, sure. you know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's very, very intense. You know, there were, were some scenes and things like that, but, you know, uh, her story is just so empowering and, and, and inspiring to just. Well, she sounds like the backbone of the entire family right now to me. Absolutely. Not only is she, is she still with us. She's still living. Yes. Right. So she sounds like the entire backbone of the family, but before we move on guys, I want to thank everybody in the chat room. Jaime Valencia. What's up, Nietzsche? Nothing but love. I want to say what's up to my cousin Ivan Reyes in Cuba um, and Mariana Alcua. Uh, George Tejeda, we see you, homeboy. Thank you for tuning in. And our friend, our homeboy, Biggie, is in the chat room. Mm -hmm. Thank you, homeboy, for mm -hmm. tapping in with us. Um, you are watching the Havana Lounge podcast. I'm here with the cast of Sam's Cry, as well as the creator producer writer angel ray now let's talk to this young man here for a second now dub you play sam yes, i'm sir. assuming yes yeah tell me about that because this 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 person is passed on now you yeah. can't sit with him as vanessa did with judy yeah how do you tap in to this to this person how do you how do you channel that well, first, I, I look for our similarities. Um, you know, his dad wasn't around, mine wasn't around. Uh, we were both in the system. We both, you know, um, looked for that love in the street, that fatherly love. Um, so that's how I, I was able to. So tie you're halfway with there, basically. Yeah, I was. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I studied right here in, in Hollywood with Anthony Gilardi. So um, when we first started, I was fairly new to acting. Um, when we talked about it originally, I was just going to be an extra in it, you know, but she, she was seeing my growth and, uh, she believed in me. And, uh, one day it went from being an extra to, Hey, do you want to be Sam? And I was like, yeah. And then, you know, a whole year passed and here we go filming, you know, we started filming. Um, <clears throat> so it was, it was dope. It was a dope experience. Um, all the way around, bro. So, okay, obviously you played the older Sam now, right? Yeah. There's, is there a younger Sam? Yes, there, yeah, there is. There is, right? Um, so you you come into the into the into the game into the into the role here now as, as you're older, probably while you're going through the incarceration part. Is yeah, that, is like that where I'm at? towards his last uh, YA years, probably like his last five to six years. Um, yeah. I played that part, so. Um, but we, sh you know, when you shoot movies, you shoot out of order. So we shot the older scenes first, and then we went to the YA scenes. You know, COVID had hit us, um, so we had to mm. stop production. That same month we started production, um, COVID hit us that same month. So. Yeah. But luckily for me, um, like I said, I was fairly new. I was able to get more training. Um, there was uh, some intense scenes, and I'm glad we shot those later on, you know, but... It was just a dope experience shooting with Vanessa, with Concrete, with, um, what's his name? Um, <laughs> which scene are you talking what's about? Name? <laughs> what's his name? What's his name? Which scene are you talking about? You what's his name? <laughs> what's his name? Uh, it's all good. No. Uh, so, so tell me this, bro. Um, when, does he be, he doesn't become addicted to drugs or anything, Sam, does he? No, but Along he was way. he was taking uh medications and um, yeah, you know those started messing them up more than helping them. So he he didn't want it because he knew he was like zombied out and and he didn't he really wasn't feeling the medication anymore. And um, now where did you y'all shoot the incarcerated scenes at? That was in South Central LA. 
Mm-hmm. A yeah. jail cell for real? Yeah, it was we, old we, YA, yeah, right? Yeah, it was an, mm-hmm. an old facility. Is that right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's a huge shout out though too to Maria for for opening mm-hmm. up that making door that for happen. us, making that Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. Shout out to Maria. Yes, no yes. doubt. Um, so golly, man, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So is when does the film come out? When when are we looking at a release date? Our goal is uh, 2023, most likely. If uh, we we're still talking about that, but we're hoping spring. But if not, but it is definitely to 2023. Okay, good deal, good deal. Mm-hmm. So you guys are wrapped. It's yes, done. we're done. Out of post production, the yes. entire thing is is sitting. Ready to be released yeah. now. Are it's you working out? Sitting in out? the vault. Uh-huh. Yeah, sitting in the it vault. Is literally, literally in the sitting vault. Sitting in the vault. Um, are you working on a distribution deal type of scenario, or are you going to go indie complete? Um, you know what? Um, we have to talk as a production because I really like everybody else's input on it, and uh, it's been talked about certain things like that, but we haven't made a final decision on that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good deal. I would say Andy Rodriguez. <laughs> Right on. Uh-huh, yeah. Guys, um, is there anything that we left out about Sam's Cry that you wanted to talk about? Is there a specific scene that you did that was, like, impactful to you? Yeah. Um, well, the other actor was Noel G. I got to. That's our yes. guy. Yeah. Shout out Noel G. Yeah, no I got doubt. to shoot some lines with him. Um, yeah. So uh, I like the scene pretty much when uh, he has a breakdown. Um due to him having those thoughts and having the PTSD, having the flashback of his dad, you know, beating his mom. Um, I had to train for that. I took one-on-one for that. And it was just a real intense scene. And I feel like that's a big part of the story um, because not too long after, you know, the ending comes, which I don't want to give it up. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it was dope, bro. So you tapped in. Yes, I tapped you got in. emotional. This is Academy yeah. Award type shit here. Yeah, so I got with my coach one on one, and he told me what to do. And it took—I'm not gonna lie—it took a little bit, about three, four minutes to get into it. But once I got into it, um, it felt like five minutes uh, of dialogue. Yeah, the the guy that was filming, he was like, "Man, the director." He was like, "That was intense, bro," and I was like. He was like, that was 15 minutes. I was like, 15 minutes? I kind of like wow. blacked out, bro. So um, it was, who, who, it was a deep Who directed scene. the film? So we had two directors. Yes. Uh, yeah. We have uh, George uh, Corona, and then we had Elijah. Williams. And, and I, what, Williams? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Elijah Williams. Yes. Right on. Are they mm-hmm. first-time directors? No, they've been doing this uh, quite some time, you know, as independent. And, and so, yeah. Good deal. Um, guys, can you, um, is there anything that you wanted to talk about in, in terms of the role that you did, an impactful moment that you feel like you, you really killed it? Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, one of the moments that stands out to me, of course, is, um, when Concrete and I are engaging, um, when he comes home, you know, again, we were able to depict what the dynamics look like between him and Judy, you know, between Junior and Judy. And of course, as you know, Angel Ray was mentioning about domestic violence was another thing that was um, in the home. The kids were witnessing this. And so, you know, this was the day <laughs> that we needed to shoot this scene, you know, where we needed to like portray that. Yeah. And so I was just like, all right, well, oh, let's, wow. let's see, let's see. Um, I, I have to be honest, I didn't put too much thought into it. I didn't want to overthink it, but it did cross my mind how much, like how many times are we going to have to do this particular scene? Right. Oh, God. And so how many takes did it take? One, <laughs> one take. <laughs> one take. Yeah. Wow. One take. Guys yes. slammed it. So, you know, it was, it was, you know, I end up on the floor, obviously you know, I'm on the ground. And, yeah. and so, um, you know, in concrete being the gentleman that he was and that he is, you know, he was like, picks me up that I'm not like that. And I, you know, and I'm like, I know, you know <laughs> yeah. I'm good. And then, you know, with the, with the director, uh, at that time, that's when Elijah, uh, came on board with us, the director, Elijah Williams. And, um, are you okay? I said, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And, you know, and just being able to, the fact that we were able to get it in one shot, I was like, okay, all right, great. I mean, of course I'm, I'm happy about that. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but just being able to, you know, and, and the thing is, is that like, even when I met with Judy, like again, having that time, that private time with her, 
like I think we all can attest to this in some way, like with end up saying how there's there, there's things that he can relate to with this film. He was able to tap into that. Sure. And for me, I had the same experience where I was able to tap into that because as I was embarking on this new journey of taking on this project and saying yes to this film, which by the way, this is the first project I've ever done. You know, I, I don't go on auditions. I'm not, I wasn't an actress. I wasn't doing this. This isn't something that was part of my life. Yeah. Um, and so taking on this role and saying, yes, this, it, it was, it, it required courage. It required me to step out and to say, I'm going to, I'm going to go for this. Right. Um, but at the same time, as I was saying yes to this new chapter in my life, I was also closing a chapter and coming out of a 10 and a half year marriage, a very unstable marriage. And so I was wondering and worried of like, am I emotionally equipped? Am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to fulfill this? But I do remember very clearly hearing within myself something say to me, you have to say yes to this role because this is how you're going to acquire the healing you need in your life. Mm. So for me, not only just taking on the role and having this new found love of acting and, and creating in that aspect, it's just been, it, there's been a transformation, a reinvention of, of who I am, like a, a shift that's taken place for me. So yeah. this, this film has done already has done so much for me. Awesome. You know, mm -hmm. and awesome. working alongside yes. Romeo and End Up and Concrete and mm -hmm. Noel and yeah, you know all all everybody. Well, Noel is a very polished actor, mm -hmm. uh, but the flip side of that is Concrete isn't a, a serious actor. <laughs> we know Concrete to be a comedic genius, yes. a funny man. Yes. What was it like for him to tap in? To such a serious role like that, is he? Did they, oh, he you know did I mean? awesome! He, he like, did he really it. do his thing? Yeah, yeah he did his thing. I, I was surprised too because I know without the proper training, you know, it, it gets hard to get tap into them roles. But yeah. I, I was surprised, you know, he killed it. But he's a professionalism, you know, he he's professional, so he's talented. You know, yeah, very he, talented. He went in there, did his thing, and what what actually why it casted him was because of a skit that he did. Is that right? Oh yeah. yeah. There was a skit that I seen and um like I said, I, I didn't know concrete. I met him like literally like months after my mother had passed, like I said. And he was so funny and he would it was part of my healing. But at the time there was a film that uh, a skit him and Noel did and I could not stop laughing. And not only that, tapped into his emotions. Because I've been an, in entertainment long enough to see how the casting directors cast people. Mm -hmm. And when people don't get casted, it's a big rejection. And sometimes it can hurt your ego. Mm -hmm. And so when I seen the film that he did, uh, the skit he did with Noel, I felt him. that Because he, he was rejected and they picked Noel. I don't know if you've seen that skit. Oh, and so skit. he was like, I could just see his emotions. And I just looked at him like, wow. He had to be here. He had to experience this for him to grab those emotions so well. Yeah. So I reached out to him and I said, hey, would you like to be a lead actor and take a lead role in yeah. a movie that I'm producing? Shout out Concrete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. that was my that was my heart for him because that, I thought he awesome. would be great. And he was. He's funny, yeah, but I he's, can't, he's I can't great. wait to see what you guys put together. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for the release. Is there going to be a some sort of a premiere? Or something like that, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good a great deal. one too. Tap in, guys. Yeah. Tap in with um, Angel Ray. Mm -hmm. um, on you want let them know your Instagram and where they can find you, okay. so they can get more information as to the release of the movie, when it's dropping, when it's coming out. Uh, my Instagram is uh, Angel Ray with uh, lowercase. Uh, actually, the line five underscore. lines. Yeah, the underscore. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, but can I say something really quick? Um, no, it's, this is your thing. We hear. Um, I want to share something really quick that that was very, very. Um, it touched bases with Sam uh, during the pandemic when the pandemic started, and in in it was the the word that Sam used that became like worldwide was he couldn't breathe. That was a heavy statement that Sam said in 1999, what the witnesses had said, that he couldn't breathe. Same situation like George Floyd. It's same situation like George Floyd. Right on. And it went, and it, from that point on, it was like confirmation that we were right on time. 
for Sam's story. Now, do we want to talk about how Sam passed away? Um, Is that something that you want? Well, to I mean, on the trailer, or you, do you want to wait for the film to come out, people? Well, I mean, the film it would be it would be great for them to know, but at the same time, when they see the trailer, I mean, it it's ob it's the obvious, but yeah. at the same time, um, this whole story, um, yeah, oh wait. <laughs> kind of same way as George Floyd. Yeah, the same way as George Floyd. Let's put it that way. Right on. The, and, and that's why there's a law changed behind Sam's story. There was two laws that were changed yeah. on behalf Amazing. of Sam. So, Amazing. and why people are still using these tactics, they're not supposed to. Yeah. Because these laws were already um, in, in the early 2000s, Sam's story was able to change two laws. Yeah. And not only that, he's at the Scientology also. He's got a monument in in the Scientology. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Tell me this: How how did you meet Sam? Um, I knew his mother from uh, way back when I was fifteen years old. I known her yeah. all my life, and she was my mentor. She was my mentor. Yeah. And Sam and I were like four years apart. Mm -hmm. Right on, mm -hmm. guys. You tapped into the Havana Lounge podcast. I want to thank people that have been in the chat room or dropping comments. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you guys. It's been a while um, since I've been on the air. It's been like a month. Mm -hmm. I've been out just doing stuff. So I apologize for not being um, more active on my platform here with, with the show. Um, but again, I want to thank all you guys for coming in, stopping by, chopping it up with me. This guy, it's good to see this guy. Um, <laughs> And, you know, and hanging out with me a little yes. bit and getting your story off and letting people know what's up, man, with Sam's Cry. Yes. Um, I appreciate you guys. Right around, right now, before we go, though, I want everybody to go around the table and um, give your Instagrams and all that where people can cool, find cool, you cool. and right. whatnot. Um, I go by Romeo Reels, any platform, R-O-M-E-O-R-E-A-L-Z. Pretty easy. Um, I got a message for everybody. It might look like we all got our stuff going on, but we all go through things. So if you're going through anything, you know my Instagram, holla at me. I'm here for you guys. You know, for real. Wow, how do I follow that? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, I'm Vanessa Romero. So with Vanessa underscore rising, you can find me on Instagram. And similar to Romeo, you know, I got other things going on as well, For especially for my sisters out there. We got a beautiful uh, one woman show that we put together called Growing Through Concrete. You can get more information on my Instagram. We got another show coming up next month out in the Orange County area. So I would love, love, love to connect with you ladies. Right on, Dubs. And Dub K, that's N D U B K on Instagram. You can also follow my acting page, which is Adrian Barron, the actor. Um, you know, Jack of All Trades will be having a show in October with this ta talented young man right here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you guys will be hearing more from me. And Angel, you, you did that already. So yeah. I wanna thank you guys all for being here, man. It's been a great conversation. I'm enlightened as to who this person was um, and the, you, you know, the roller coaster ride of emotions this kid must have been through and um, I'm touched. I'm deeply touched by the story, um, and, I, and I can't wait to see. I really want to see Concrete deliver this oh. role as well, as, as well as all of you guys. But yes. in, in, for me, Concrete, um, being such a funny guy, it's like hard to imagine to him imagine. Yeah. in a very serious role. But I'm, this is why I'm going to buy a ticket mm -hmm. to go see the film. Mm -hmm. Guys, you've been tuned into the Havana Lounge podcast with the cast of Sam's Cry. <laughs> Um, I just want to say thank you for everybody for tapping in today. I see some more people coming in the <laughs> chat room. I appreciate you. Um, and guys, remember, like, I, I'm getting ready to wrap up right now. Um, but um, like I do right about this time, I want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you guys for coming through. And, and guys, don't forget, in the words of the great Curtis Mayfield, remember that your dream is your only scheme, so keep on pushing and move on up. That's my time. I'm Mellow Man Ace. This is Sam's Cry. We're going to uh, probably go hang out, go get something to eat right now. But, guys, thanks <laughs> yeah. for tapping in. Thanks for tuning in, and I appreciate y'all. So Solomon, take us out. Peace. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Good stomach deal. Kept growling. <laughs> <laughs> did, you hear, did you hear my stomach growling? <laughs> Mine was too. I 